You might be interested in seeing what a Jane Street interview is like. We grabbed one of our trading new hires, Andrea, and had Graham, a more experienced trader, ask her a problem that we used to ask in actual trading interviews. Hi, I'm Graham. And I'm Andrea. We're both traders here at Jane Street. Graham's been here for a couple years now, and I just started full-time this year. We get a lot of questions about our trading interview process and what we look for in an interview. Our interviews can cover a lot of different things, but typically you would spend most of your interview time working together with your interviewer on a challenging, and hopefully also fun, quantitative problem. In this video, we're going to give you a sample of what that might look like, with me as the interviewer and Andrea as the interviewee. Thanks, Andrea. Yep, of course. And by the way, this question really was new to me. I've never seen it before. That's right. I asked Andrea a question that feels like the kind of question we might ask somewhere in our interview process, but of course, it's not a question we're actually using right now. At the end of the video, we'll recap a bit to discuss how it went and some things I was looking for. I'm going to describe a, um, a, a casino-style game you might play. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a one-player game where you'll have various options, and I'm wondering um, what you would do to maximize your earnings from it. Okay. So in this game, you have a 20-sided die. So mm -hmm. a die with the numbers 1 to 20 on the faces. Mm -hmm. And at the start of the game, it's on the table, and the one face is facing upright. Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to have 100 rounds, mm -hmm. and in each round you have two options. You can either roll the die, replacing whatever it's currently showing with a new number, mm -hmm. or you can take a number of dollars from the casino equal to the current face. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And my question is, how would you play this game, and how much money do you think you'll make on average? Mm -hmm. uh, how many rolls do I get? Is there any cap? Uh, no, you have 100 rounds and you can take either option on each round, but okay. there are no limitations to I other, see. Other than that. Uh, and just to clarify, to roll again, I pay? Uh, there's Is there's no pay. Uh, to, if you if you take the roll again option, you, you use your turn up and you roll the die, but that's uh. all that happens. Okay, then can I just keep rolling until I hit a 20 and then take my money and leave? Uh, sorry? Am I missing uh, when, something when, there? No, no, that, that, that's okay, but when you take money, you, the game does not end. Um, so if you take money, okay. you still uh -huh. keep going until you've played 100 rounds. Oh, wait, wait, sorry, there's 100 rounds? There's 100 and... rounds, and mm -hmm. on each round, you can re-roll the die or take money. And neither mm -hmm. of those options ends the game. You can take mul you can take money multiple times. Oh, gotcha, and you keep you just keep doing this for 100 <clears throat> rounds and whether... Yeah, ex exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, and... Uh, Sorry, so when you when you take the money, do you re-roll after that? No. Or but it keeps going for a hundred rounds? Yes. Wait, so wait, do you have like at like sorry, I just like to walk through this. Like No, that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Um if I rolled it like three times and then I hit a like 17 or something and then took the money. Yep. What would happen after that for the other 97 rounds? You now have 96 rounds remaining, and there is a die mm -hmm. with a 17 upright on the table, and mm -hmm. you can choose between taking $17 again or rolling mm -hmm. the die. Oh, okay, I understand now. Sorry. That... <laughs> That's fine. It's, it's a bit of a contrived scenario. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay. So in this case, um, I... Let me think. The chances of rolling a... 20, I would guess it would take me around 20 times to achieve that. Uh -huh. uh, I'm wondering, like, so one strategy that I would consider is roll until re-roll until you hit a 20, and then just take 20 for every round after that. Yep, I agree. Uh, That's a thing yeah. you could do. Yep. So now I'm just balancing that strategy with rolling until I hit, like, say, anything greater than like 18, 18 or greater, and then keeping that for the rest of it. Mm -hmm. and thinking about how uh, those two compare. Um, I'm just going to like try out like uh, the situation of like rolling a 20 versus rolling a 19 or 20. Okay. So I guess uh, for 20, that would just mean that I roll like on average like a 10 for around like 20 rounds. Mm -hmm. So let's say that's like approximately $200. And then for the another, another 80 rounds, you roll 20. So that'd be 1600 so then that strategy I would expect to get like 1800 from. Oh, sorry, just to clarify, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. rounds where you rolled the die, you didn't mm -hmm. get any money. Oh, it's, it's either right, roll okay. the die or take money. 
Yes. Gotcha. Okay, I see. So in that case, uh, uh, then around 1600 is what I'd expect to get for yep. just like 80 rounds, which I roll a 20. Um, then let's say I'm a little more lenient and I will accept a 19 or 20. So then that would take me like 10 rounds to get there. And then I would have 90 rounds getting like, let's say, uh, a 19.5. Mm -hmm. So then in that case, uh, I would expect to get like 1755 or let's just say like $1,750, approximately that. Um, okay. All right, so then that strategy seems better than the previous one. Um, I can just, I'm just gonna try like uh, going down by like another one or two and see at what point I feel like I've maximized. Yep, sounds very reasonable. Uh, uh, okay, cool. So then um, with now 18, 19, or 20, then that's 3 20ths of a possibility. So uh, that would only take me like around a little under seven rounds. And then that's like, I have 93 chances-ish to get uh, a, something like 19. So, oh. um, doo -doo -doo. okay, so then that gives me like 1767, which does look like slightly better than the previous one. Okay, I'll just see another one. Uh, if I do, if I accept 17, 18, 19, 20, that would take me uh, five rolls on average. Uh, so I have 95 chances to get a uh, 18.5, so. That looks like uh, seven. Okay, so that looks like a little lower than before. I'm getting like, uh, like seventeen fifty seven fifty eight. Okay, so in that case, I think I would go with the strategy of rolling until I hit a eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and then keeping it from there. Yeah, no, that sounds really good. Um, mm. And just to clarify I, something I think you did, um, when you said, okay, so it's going to take me this many rolls to roll a 18, 19, or 20, mm -hmm. and then from then on I'm going to get a 19. Where did that mm -hmm. 19 come from? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I was thinking that uh, if it's an 18, 19, or 20, those seem equally likely, and thus I'm taking the average of the three. Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Now, let's move on to a slightly different version of this question, which mm -hmm. is actually going to be more like you thought it was at the start. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so, so now I'm going to change the question so mm -hmm. that when you take the money, mm -hmm. you also take the die off the table. And so you have to roll it again before you can take the money. So, so this mm -hmm. time, the die goes mm -hmm. away after you take the money, and mm -hmm. you have to spend a turn rolling it before you can, before you can take money again. Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to know how you think this version of the question changes. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, so let's say if I have a... Okay, and that my, so my first inclination is I would be willing to accept a much lower number to take the money and then re-roll. Um, let's uh -huh. just say if I have a strategy that's like, uh, I accept uh, the top uh, half of numbers, like 11 through 20, I'm just thinking through what that would look like. Um, okay, so in that case, half the time I would take money and half the time I would re-roll. Wait, wait, sorry, uh, just to make sure I'm understanding this. So uh, every time I can take the money. Uh-huh, uh, only, if, or... only if the die is on the table. Like, mm -hmm. if, if you, once you've taken money, you're mm -hmm. going to have to roll the die again before you can take money again. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so what's prevent, if it's 100 rounds, what's, pre what's preventing me from just taking the money every time because it's always, because positive money is better than zero money? I think I'm still misunderstanding something. Oh, sorry. So um, so once you take the, once you take the money once, mm -hmm. the die goes away, and then mm -hmm. you have to roll it before you have the option of taking money again. So, mm -hmm. and, and that uses up a round. So a thing you could do is you could roll the die and mm -hmm. take money and roll the die and take money. Mm -hmm. And that's used up four of our terms. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Um, versus another strategy would be to uh, like roll, roll, roll. Oh, I like that. And then take the money and then roll, Correct. roll, roll. I see. Okay, yes, that makes a lot of sense now. Thanks. No, sorry. This is a bit confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> all good. Um, so yeah, let's say I have a strategy that's like take the top half of numbers. So um, I guess the way that I would imagine this playing out would be like the... Average sequence is I roll it. I am not half. It is something like maybe less than ten or below. 
I roll yeah. it again. Oh, it, now it's 11 to 20. So then I use up like two rolls and I get something that's like, um, oh, sorry. I use up three turns, roll, roll, take money, like that sequence. And then I would get 15.5. Uh, okay. Uh, pay out from that. Um, versus the 15.5 like being the average, uh, average of, the of 11 through 20. Yeah, yep. okay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, versus, I guess, like the baseline strategy of just like roll, take whatever it is, roll, take whatever it is. Uh, that uses up like, I guess, I could play that sequence through 50 times and then get like uh, 10.5 every time. Okay. So then let's just say like baseline strategy is you make $525 and then you call that. Um, yep. Versus uh, if I do the three turn strategy and get 15.5 uh, every time, I could do that like 33 times. So uh, that looks like that would uh, make me five uh, of wait five hundred eleven dollars. Okay, so that seems a little bit worse than the other strategy. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, cool. So then I think now just finding like maybe the strategy looks similar to I will accept any, I will take the money for any roll above N and roll again for anything below. Yeah, that, that, sounds, mm -hmm. that sounds good. Yeah, cool. Okay, so a matter of finding uh, which one it is. So I guess the number of uh, times I would have to do this roll, I guess we can think about the percent of numbers that I would accept. So let's say uh, if I accept like, the fraction x of numbers of the 20, then it would be uh, 1 over x would be the number of turns. 1 over x and then plus the take the money, so plus 1 yep. would be the number of turns I would have to use up. And then that means I can play this game through 100 over all of that times. Yep. So okay. I'm just going to simplify that a little bit. So like 100x over one plus x would be like the number of times I can play. Mm -hmm. um, play through the sequence. And then on average, uh, I would, the payout I would get from that would be, um, let's see, so if I took like the top uh, x, that would be 20 times x. Uh, and then averaged with, oh, sorry. I'm averaging 20 with um, 20 minus uh, 20x. So then in that case, uh, it's just 20 minus 10x would be like the average payout from all of those things. Mm -hmm. Cool, okay. So now it looks like I am going to get a function which I can maximize, so That'd be uh, 1,000 x uh, times 2 minus x over 1 plus x. OK, cool. Yep, that uh -huh. sounds reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think I'll make you do all the algebra to maximize mm -hmm. this, um, mm -hmm. but just tell me quickly how you would if, if some mean person made you do it. Uh, yeah, sure. I would just uh, take the derivative, set it equal to 0, uh, do a sanity check to make sure this is like a, a maximum yeah. <laughs> type thing, and <laughs> see if it is, I guess, above 525, which is my current best. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll believe that'll work. Um, mm -hmm. So I think as it happens, if you do this, you will find that you should actually take anything six or higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I was expecting somewhere between one and 10, so yeah. Yeah, and I guess there's a cute mm -hmm. way to see this. Um, so you, I think, calculated that, that you were gonna make about $500 over 100 turns, right? Mm -hmm. So how much money can you make each turn, roughly? Uh, five bucks. So should you spend a turn picking up a seven? Uh, oh, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and that way you That's get to so skip clever. the algebra. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so let's move on just to one more variant of this question. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's go back to the first one where mm -hmm. you didn't have to, um, sorry, where you, you got to keep the number on the table uh, mm -hmm. between rolls. Mm -hmm. Well, almost. This time, the casino gets to play. Oh, when, okay. Once you take money, the casino gets to choose whether it wants to re-roll the die. Mm -hmm. And if it wants to, it re-rolls the die. This mm -hmm. doesn't cost your turn, but the value of the die changes. I see. Mm -hmm. um, and the casino goal is to minimize the amount of money you make. Reasonable. Now, 
this is complicated enough that maybe we can't solve it exactly, but I'm curious to hear like how you think this version will work. Mm -hmm. I see. Can the casino uh, re-roll once or any number of times until? Uh, they satisfied. get the option to re-roll once every okay. time you mm -hmm. take the every time you take the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, and this is back to the first version where I can take the money. Uh, if if you take the and money mm -hmm. and the casino chooses not to re-roll the die, mm -hmm. then that number is still available for you to take again next round. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. take the money and the casino does re-roll the die, mm -hmm. then a new number is available for you to take next round if you want. Okay. Hi. Makes sense. Uh, my first guess about how this would go is uh, if I play with strategy, I will accept anything above uh, N or higher. Casino yep. has a strategy like I want to re-roll for any like uh, X or lower. Um, yep. We will have perhaps at some point there will be some number, say like 10, in which case I just accept the 10. Casino just also accepts the 10 and then we just... Uh, continue. Uh, yep. That that's like the equilibrium position. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you have a guess of roughly where this number will end up being? Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, well, if I if I play the eighteen or higher strategy, casino is certainly going to re-roll me on that because that's me maximizing for myself. Right. Um, so let's say you mm -hmm. you roll a nineteen, you take mm -hmm. it. The casino mm -hmm. re-rolls. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now what happens? Uh, casino re-rolls, and now. I think, darn, my strategy's been foiled. I don't get to keep the 19, so. Yep. Uh, I would probably just have to accept a lower number. Like, then my strategy might become, I will accept 15 or higher, and Casino sees the 15, thinks, I re-roll the expectation is like a 10.5, so I should definitely re-roll that. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so I would guess, um, like, yeah, like t 10 or 11, something there where we both don't have like too much incentive to uh, re-roll and try. Okay, but, yeah, um, so, so I think I believe the answer should be down near 10-ish. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you're saying you'll play the strategy of take money on 10 or higher, 11 or higher? Just uh, Yeah. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter, but give me something to be concrete. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, sure, uh, 10. Ten or higher? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think the casino is going to do? Um, well, if it sees, if it still sees like a 15 or something, it will also re-roll for me. Okay. And uh, bring me down for uh, the next time. Um, I guess if it lands on a 10, the casino may just let me keep it because yeah. 10 is lower than the expected value of their next roll. Um, so, uh -huh. mm -hmm. so why yeah. don't we imagine playing this out and see how mm -hmm. it would go? Like, yeah. see how much money you'll make. So, mm -hmm. just to be concrete, you're playing the strategy of uh, take money when it's ten or higher, mm -hmm. and the casino is playing the strategy of re-roll elevens or higher. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's. How much money do, do, can we see you'll make in this game? Um. Uh, sorry, can the casino make in this game? Oh, uh, sorry. How much money will you make in this game? Oh, um, like it, like if people play see. these strategies. Oh, gotcha. Uh, -huh. uh, let's see. So if I roll a, let's say like it's around half chance that, uh, yeah, it might be easier to think about. Let's say like casino and I both just have the same strategy of like eleven or higher. Sure. Like we we do some we do our move. So you and them both agree that 11s and higher are good for you, and so you yeah. want them, and they want to re-roll them. Okay, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So this seems like an oscillation between, like, uh, if I roll a 10 or lower half the time, then the casino will just let me, will not want to re-roll for me, uh, uh -huh. versus if I roll an 11 or higher, the casino will immediately re-roll the one after. Uh, sorry, and just to clarify, mm -hmm. the casino only has the option to re-roll once you take the money. They don't just get to re-roll every turn. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. no, keep going. Mm -hmm. um, so if I say like 11 or higher and I decide to keep it, then the casino will re-roll me on it. Okay. So um, in that case, I... Yeah, so like, let's say the situation ends up with me uh, making like fifteen point five dollars, 
and then casino re-rolling. So then uh, after that, I have, I kind of start from scratch. So like every two rolls, I fill my criteria of 11 or higher. So then yep. I get to play like 50 times this sequence of events uh, and get like 155 from those. So then I guess I expect to get like $775 playing this strategy. Okay. Yep, mm -hmm. that sounds pretty good. Um, okay, so how much money are you making per roll here? Uh, in that case, I'm making like uh, seven, eight dollars. So yeah. in that case, okay. maybe that means I should change my threshold. Ah, what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay, so if it, yeah, if that's a seven, eight per roll, then if I get an eight, I should think, hmm, not bad, and maybe just <laughs> take the money. Yeah, very possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why don't we just calculate how that one goes and see if it's better? Yeah, yeah so that seems reasonable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so if I go eight through 20, um, 20 so then like uh, 14 on average, and I get to play this through uh, 13 twentieths of the time. So, uh, and sorry, remind me, uh, taking the money that is a move? Uh, yes. Or, okay, gotcha. So then I'd expect uh, 20 over 13 plus one. So 33 over 13 is like the number of, is how long a sequence is? I think maybe you don't want that plus one okay. um, because you get to see mm -hmm. the casino's initial roll for free. Like the casino it's gives you a, it gives you a random oh, start. Oh, right, yeah, okay, they gave me that one. Okay, sounds good, cool. So then uh, 100 over that. So then I get 13 over 5, uh, which is um, 2.6. Uh, wait. What did I just do? Uh, uh, wait, sorry. So there's 100 rounds, and then I have 100 rolls as before, and then each sequence takes me 20 over 13 times. So then, okay, yeah, so then I got to play this through 65 yeah. times. Cool, yeah, and then 14 each times. Okay, so that's 130 times seven, and then uh, I play it, yeah, $910, that is more than before. Yeah. Cool, okay, uh, in that case, I should increment by... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think I won't make you write this anymore, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, yeah. The, the answer is probably somewhere in between the two. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay, that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'll stop the interview here. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, in a real interview, there might be more questions, or mm -hmm. I would stop at the end and ask Andrea whether she has any questions for me about mm -hmm. Jane Street or the internship <laughs> or what she might be applying for or mm -hmm. anything else. Uh, but for now, that's, that's good. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So for the benefit of the people watching this video, let's talk about how we think that went. First of all, Andrea, I think you did really well at that question. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. I'm still kicking myself over a few things, but overall, I agree. I think that went pretty well. And in fairness, you are already a trader here, so I'd expect you to do well. Not just because you're smart, obviously, <laughs> but also because of how much experience you have working on problems like this one. So if you're watching this video and you feel like you wouldn't necessarily have been able to get as far as Andrea did or make progress as fast, don't be discouraged by that. So Anyway, it initially took us a minute or two to really get on the same page about what question I was asking. That's totally fine. It can take a while to wrap your head around a new problem, and it was really good that Andrea kept clarifying until she understood what I was asking. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how much to push there, but I figured it would have been really sad if I did a bunch of work on a question that turned out to be the wrong question. Yeah, that would have been unfortunate. I think it was pretty good to keep clarifying. And that leads me to communication more generally. I thought you did a great job of talking me through your thought process. Sometimes that just convinced me that you knew what you were talking about, and other times it helped me know when to give you a hint or correct a misconception. We recognise that it can be hard to think and talk at the same time, and we really don't expect candidates to talk just quite as much as you did, but I think you demonstrated why we do find it important to think out loud. Yeah, this is some advice I remember getting from my interviewers back when I was going through the process myself. They encouraged me to think out loud, and it was really helpful. Of course, it feels a lot more natural now that I've been working here for a bit. I spend a lot of my day thinking out loud. But I remember having to be pretty conscious about it when I was interviewing. And onto the quantitative aspects of the question, I thought you did a good job of thinking about the problem and breaking it down into smaller and more solvable pieces. I liked how sometimes you would work through a strategy to see what happened, or if it would spur any better ideas to work on, even if it wasn't necessarily going to be the best strategy overall. 
We find that these are helpful problem-solving techniques, and in general, this process of iterative and collaborative problem-solving does better replicate what having a conversation on a trading desk here at Jane Street might look like. And when I did give you hints, you were really able to take them and run with them. Yeah, those are much appreciated. Well, thanks, Graham. This was super fun to work on. It reminds me of my own Jane Street interviews back in the day, which were also tons of fun. To be honest, I was quite nervous leading up to them. They were some of the first interviews I had ever done. But my interviewers really put me at ease and made the process feel more like an exciting discussion than an interview. Great. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video, and best of luck with your interviews.